What's up guys, Kudokun here. Today we're going to do a small update, small Q&A video. I'm being a little lazy today, so I don't really feel like going on camera. But doing it this way means I can edit, and most people just listen to this in the background anyway, so it's not a big deal. So first things first, on the card gaming front, there should be about two more Shauna videos, maybe. Um, I've got two more deck profiles I want to do, the Turbo Villains and the Shauna Waifu. So... I might do videos on both of those, but I might just do a video on one of them because the Shauna Waifu deck is so similar to the Flame Change deck. I might just skip that one. During the last stream, a fan of mine let me know about a card game that came out recently called Eldritch, so I'm looking into doing a review of that soon. We've also got reviews of, of course, Yokai Watch and Zatch Bell still on the back burner. I haven't really been touching uh, card game reviews very much lately, but I do still have the stuff ready to do them. They've just taken a backseat to the other content I've been doing. And finally, I know that the streams have been horrible lately because the internet disconnects, but we are going to try to conclude the Ultimate Harem Challenge this weekend. I think I might do something to let people who haven't gotten to play very much earn some extra points, like maybe have you guys play against each other and just let me know who wins and who loses and give you points that way. Or maybe just play some people off of the stream so that they can get some extra points that way too. The person in lead right now has four points. You get one point if you lose and three points if you win. So really, it's anybody's game right now. If you think it's too late to participate, I really don't think so. Uh, you should be able to get a deck together this week. If you haven't seen anything on the Ultimate Harem Challenge, just check out the video called Ultimate Harem Challenge on my video channel. And just as a small reminder, the winner of the Ultimate Harem Challenge will decide what set we will focus on for next month's Weiss videos. On to gaming. So everybody knows I was looking forward to Detective Pikachu more than anybody, and I was really putting everything I could into getting a review of it out on release day, and then I hit a minor snag. For whatever reason, my 3DS won't connect to my computer anymore through the Wi-Fi network. I don't really know what the problem is. I know it has to do with our Wi-Fi network here because uh, I went to a nearby coffee shop and I connected there, but unfortunately I can't get the right permissions at a coffee shop to stay connected to my 3DS. It's a really complicated mess right now, so I was really excited to have the ability to stream 3DS to the computer, but right now it looks like I've once again lost that ability. Honestly, I don't know what's going on with it. I've spent hours upon hours researching Google to figure out what the answer is, and I've tried pretty much everything I can think of, and I just can't get it to work again. So because of that, 3DS reviews will either have to go back to their old style, where I just go over screenshots and talk about what I thought about certain parts of the game without any gameplay, or I will have to put 3DS game reviews on hold until I can get that problem sorted. I found out recently that I can actually do the same kind of streaming setup with my Vita, and that was very exciting because I was looking forward to doing some more Vita reviews, especially with some really great RPGs that came out recently like Mary Skelter, but I can't I can't really guarantee that I'm not going to run into the same problem. I haven't tried it yet, but I am going to give it a shot nonetheless. Also with my Vita, my right analog stick is broken, so I've got another one coming in the mail. <laughs> Hopefully I can get everything working because I'd really like to get some of these reviews out there since uh, handheld gaming is what I play normally. In the meantime, there are two more games that I'd like to review. Uh, Nino Kuni 2 is the game I'm working on currently. There should be a review for that up within the next couple of days. I'm about seven or eight hours into it so far. And then Alliance Alive, which is once again a 3DS game, so I have no idea what's going to happen there. So the big thing I want to talk about is I'm going to try and branch out on social media a little bit. Some people may notice that on my channel homepage, on the banner, there's actually some links to some social media sites. By clicking an icon, you can go to my social media site on each of those platforms. Twitter is one I'd like to get more invested in. My first Twitter account actually got banned, apparently through spamming, because I guess it went and uploaded uh, a new tweet every single time I uploaded a video. And that's a that was a bit of a problem, but I got a new Twitter. Um, it's kudo underscore YT. I'll put a link to it in the description below. And hopefully I can get around the whole spamming thing by actually uh, going and liking some tweets or uh, trying to keep up with some people on it. I still don't plan on using it a whole lot, but, you know, maybe half an hour or so a day I'll go on, see what's happening, and uh, like a few tweets, pass a few things on, and see what I can do. The Discord is up there. It should be set to permanent, so you should be able to join the Discord whenever you want. If you can't, then just let me know in a comment or something, and I'll figure out a way to fix it. 
If you're looking to keep up with me and if you're looking to talk to other people who also watch the channel, that's probably the best place to do it right now because it's the most active. I also went and made myself a Tumblr, which I know is a little cringy. Uh, Tumblr has a lot of negativity associated with it, but honestly, it is a pretty decent place to go and try to network. Since it's a blogging site, one thing I can do that's kind of interesting is uh, I can go back to some of my old videos and I can spread them around and write a small blog about like my thoughts, like if anything's changed or uh, um, maybe give some behind the scenes as to what I was thinking when I made certain videos. Oftentimes I'll make a review or something and I'll always think after the video's uploaded like, ah oh, crap, I totally left out this thing that I was going to talk about. But with something like Tumblr, I could easily put a review or something up and then later make a small blog about all the stuff that I left out or all the stuff that I cut for time or any of the, my thoughts or opinions that have changed on the game since then. It's also a neat way to get some traffic on some of my older videos uh, using a new platform, so we'll have to see what happens there. If that interests you, check out the description below, and you should find a link to the Tumblr there. And finally, Twitch. Um, I've always had a Twitch account. I've always thought about streaming there. I would very, very much like to go there and start streaming. The only reason I haven't already is, of course, my internet problems. I have to figure out a way to get these internet problems under control. Just to keep you guys in the know about this, uh, if I do any gameplay-related streams, they will almost always be on the Twitch channel, and I'll put a small, like, trailer or something on my YouTube channel, but I will not be doing any card game-related stuff over there, so if all you're here for are, like, the card games and chills, or uh, live set reviews whenever I do those, or whatever, then go ahead and just stay here, but if you want to see my actual gameplay footage, um, that's going to be over there on the Twitch account, because I don't want to flood this channel with a bunch of gameplay streams that people can't get into. The next time I stream, I'll probably try to get an omnibus done, which for anybody who doesn't remember, trust me, I don't blame you, it's been so long, is where I go through and I pick an old system, and then I just sort of play a bunch of games from that system and like every 10 to 15 minutes switch games. That way, if you come in late or something, you don't have to worry about missing anything because uh, we're just going to constantly switch through games so fast that there's nothing to really follow. And it should be interesting to come by and see what I'm playing next. There's also a chance I could use it to stream like actual games from this generation, like uh, an Atelier game, or a Valkyria game, or an RPG of some kind. That could definitely happen too, but uh, probably not until after I get my internet problems sorted. If things go really, really well over there, I might do some like stream highlights and put them up on the channel, but for the right now, I'm thinking I just one and done, go over there, stream, and be done with it. So, whew, it has been a big update day today. <laughs> Last of the updates, though, are my other content. So first up is Logical Japanese. Uh, it's not dead, it's not going anywhere. I have at least three other videos scripted out. A video about honorifics, a video about um, places to go to get study material, and a video about flashcards. Discussion videos, there really hasn't been anything interesting to talk about lately. Um, I am looking for stuff to talk about because, again, I like just kind of talking into this microphone here and getting people's thoughts on things. There just hasn't been a whole lot to talk about lately. Now, I'd like to talk about two video ideas that I had before that I'd like to give small updates on. Firstly, I brought up the idea of covering some uh, lol cows, like people you'd find on Encyclopedia Dramatica, like uh, Darkside Phil is still doing stuff, Chris Chan is still doing stuff. I follow people like this religiously, and I would love to do content on them. I'm just still a little worried about how my fan base is going to react to something like that. Um, this isn't this isn't a very negative channel, so if I start making videos specifically. Uh, going after people or specifically um, making fun of people. I really don't know how everybody's going to react to that. It is something I would like to look into doing. It's just not something I know if I'm ready to do yet. And then lastly, the Kudo After Hours videos. So for those who don't know, I used to do a lot of study on um, sexuality and video games and different like hentai fetishes and that kind of stuff. Believe it or not, there's actually a lot of very interesting things going on in, like, hentai artistry and uh, the hentai industry and so on. But of course, that kind of stuff comes with its own stigma, and it's really difficult to see when you're about to cross a line. 
Like for me, I can talk about weird fetishes all day long, okay? I'll talk about foot fetishes, I'll talk about wincest, I'll talk about furries, I'll talk about it all. But that's also a dangerous personality to have because if I just openly talk about something that's actually very controversial or something that people really, really don't want me to talk about or makes people very uncomfortable, that kind of thing is going to stick with the channel forever. Like, this is the internet, there's really no avoiding it. The first time I say something that the rest of the internet disagrees with, it's going to hurt the channel and my growth as a content creator pretty much forever. So I'm afraid to start digging into that stuff, like covering uh, erotic games or things in like the doujinshi industry or uh, interviewing hentai artists and doing that kind of stuff. I'm really afraid to start getting into that because I don't know if I myself can figure out where the YouTube line is. And like I said before, I'm not worried about getting demonetized. I, I really don't need the money from here. I'm doing completely fine on my own. I don't live a luxurious life. The extra money is nice, but... Um, if something happens and some of my videos get demonetized, it's really not going to affect me too much. To me, it's really not about the money or making YouTube happy, it's about making the audience happy. I don't really want to dump my time into making content that makes people uncomfortable because that's not really fun for me. What's fun for me is spending a few hours making a video and then having people say that they really enjoyed it or sparking some kind of discussion or whatnot. Honestly, if you have any kind of opinion on that, if you want to see me maybe try to guess something out just to see what it would be like, or if maybe you agree with what I'm saying and you'd like me to keep that kind of stuff off of the channel, then just let me know. The idea of doing that stuff on another channel is also always on the table, so I could make another channel where I just talk about Chris Chan and Dark Side Phil and weird fetishes, but I really don't know if I want to do something like that because I've always had the mindset that I want to keep everything on one channel. So I don't know guys, it's all just kind of up in the air. Just let me know what you think down in the comments below, and I think that's going to be it for the updates. Over these past three weeks, I've actually been getting a lot of questions. Um, a lot to me is like 12. I think I have like 12 questions lined up, which isn't a lot to most people, but it's kind of a lot for me considering I stopped getting questions for a really long time. And we're going to get to the first one now. Kudokun, what is your favorite video game? For those who don't know, my favorite video game of all time, hands down, bar none, is Paper Mario. And it might shock some people, but I'm talking about the original, not Thousand Year Door. Thousand Year Door is still an amazing game, but when I think of my favorite video game, I think of the video game that I want to play the most often and that I can pop in at any time and just have a good time with. Paper Mario is the kind of game that you can just kind of stick in on a rainy day, uh, start a new game, beat the entire game, and be happy with the way you spent your day. Paper Mario Thousand Year Door is a lot more dense, like it takes a few days to really get through it. So even though it's got some polished mechanics and is technically better in a lot of senses, it's just not my favorite because it's not the kind of game that I can put in and then just beat in one continuous loop. This game is followed closely by Majora's Mask, which I'm very happy to talk about sometime on the channel. Have you ever considered doing political or social videos? The simple answer to that question is no. If I ever did do social or political videos, I would most definitely make another channel to do them. I don't really want to bring that stuff here. Uh, politics are already hard enough to get away from on the internet. I really don't want to make a channel that is sort of just around finding fun and unique interesting things to do with your free time about politics. That, I really hate to tell you guys, but everyone's politics are so different, there's no way that everyone is going to agree with my politics. Here are my thoughts on politics as a whole. Um, I'm not on the left or the right, I stand right in the middle, and I take the best ideas from both. I really think the idea of assigning yourself to one of two political groups or being on one of two sides of any conflict is a stupid idea. I think you're always going to get the best results if you disassociate yourself from both sides and then just take the ideas that you like from both sides and make your own political side. I know people like to differentiate by saying things like right, far right, and left, far left, alt right, so on and so forth, but I really think that that's just sort of delaying the issue. If you see something like social justice and anti-social justice, then don't be a part of either of those two sides. Just stand on the sidelines. Find the best ideas from both, and then have your own opinion based on those ideas. That's the long and short of my ideas on politics, and that's probably the most political I'll ever get here. If anybody wants to know my specific stance on something, I'm normally happy to talk about it, but you won't be able to gather what my thoughts on something are by just figuring out whether I'm left or right. You've got to ask me about the issue directly, and that's really what I'll tell you every time. What happened to your Vita Games to Look Out For series? Man, I really hate to be the one to break this to you, but the Vita is pretty much dead. 
<laughs> like all of the best Vita games are also on PC, and most of the great Vita games are just PC ports at this point. So anytime I make a video that specifically highlights things about the Vita, it's just going to be me covering games that are also on Steam or something. I have been looking to do something like uh, top anime games to look out for, period, and maybe some Vita games would end up on that list, but I really don't want to cover the Vita in particular anymore because I feel like the system is on its last legs and there's really not much to cover anymore. I can't really do a video called, like, the top two video games to look out for in 2018. What is the hardest slash easiest thing about being a YouTuber and what was your favorite moment? I'd say the hardest thing about being a YouTuber is training yourself not to respond to people. I know that sounds a little pompous and a little arrogant, but uh, it's really difficult to stop yourself from just flat out replying to every single person that talks to you or replying to every single comment you get. See, I use YouTube as a social platform, so whenever somebody puts up a comment or something, my immediate reaction is to go and leave a reply to their comment, but I stopped doing that because there's a lot more negativity than positivity associated with doing it. If somebody says something I disagree with, or if somebody says something just flat out wrong, then I don't really want to respond to them because it just makes me look like a bit of a douchebag, and because they're anonymous on my channel, they can kind of get away with saying whatever they want. And I realize that because you can't really see like the tone of somebody's voice based on how they talk on a comment, uh, I can come off as looking sort of arrogant or sort of pompous whenever I reply to somebody's comment, even if I don't mean it at all. For example, if somebody brings up that I forgot to talk about something and I leave them a comment saying, no, actually, I talked about it, here's the timestamp where you can go and listen to me talk about it, a lot of people can look at that as going, oh, wow, hey, whoa, calm down, Kudo, he didn't really mean it that way. And then I have to explain my way out of it, like, no, like, really, I'm not I'm not angry at him for saying it, like, he just missed it, and, like, I'm just giving him the timestamp, and it, it gets really complicated there because uh, it's tough to see how people are responding to what I'm writing. So if you ever leave a comment and I don't respond to it, know that I do read all of the comments. I just don't respond to it because uh, I don't want to accidentally say something in a way that makes people uh, see me in sort of a negative light. Especially critiques. I'm very susceptible to critiques of my videos. If you say that there's something wrong in my videos, or if you say there's something I can do better in my videos, I always read those and I always try to take them to heart. I normally just don't respond because no matter what kind of response I give to a critique, it can look like uh, I'm, being, I'm being a jerk to somebody when I really don't intend to be. Now the easiest thing. Um, easy is a really weird word. I actually don't know how I would describe something being easy on YouTube. I'd say probably the easiest thing about being a YouTuber is finding new content. I, I, like, once you've figured out a way to get a series rolling, there's almost always somebody who will tell you that they have a suggestion on what you should do next, and then you just cover their thing, and then more people suggest what you should do next, and as long as you're listening to your fan base, it's really easy to just continuously find content that your fans want you to do, as long as you're still delivering that content in a way that everybody finds entertaining. And what was my favorite moment? I'd say my favorite moment ever so far has been uh, I went to Anime Expo a few years ago and I made a video before Anime Expo showing what I would be looking like and what I would be dressing in. And somebody actually from my fan base came to Anime Expo and found me and had a conversation with me. Meeting a fan is the most surreal thing that I have ever gone through, and I have no idea how I'm going to respond if I ever go through it again. I don't think he watches my stuff anymore. He called himself Setsuna on YouTube, and he found me, and I was like, hey, man, we should totally take a picture. And then we took a picture, and then I asked him if he wanted to come and hang out with my friends and I. And uh, then he said no, he was busy that he couldn't hang out, but he was really glad to meet me. And I said I was really glad to meet him too, and uh, I thought it was really awesome. I wish I still had the picture, but unfortunately, that phone got lost in a car fire. That is a long story meant for another day. But yeah, getting to meet a fan in real life is something that I just, I can't even describe to you because it's so weird. But weird in a good way. Last question. Who do you watch on YouTube? My YouTube history is a bit of a mess. I kind of, what I do is I find a YouTuber that I like and then I binge their content for two or three days and then I find somebody else and I do the same. Or I'll go back and rewatch a bunch of content from somebody that I've already binged. Like, I can sit and re-watch YouTube videos all day long, like, uh, there's somebody named Gino Samuel 2 who did a, a history series on Chris Chan's life, and I've listened to each of those videos probably 10 to 20 times. I also really like a fighting game character named Lythero, who does a lot of really funny 
Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 videos, and uh, he's done some pretty great stuff for other fighting games too, like Smash Brothers. Right now I'm listening to somebody named Back Pocket Game Reviews because he's doing a video series on um, what it was like to work at GameStop and different things about GameStop. I love, I absolutely love hearing people tell stories about their work experiences because people have some really crazy work stories. Fantavision is another great place to go for that kind of stuff. Even though I don't play Yu-Gi-Oh, I still watch Nim Nim. I think he's pretty funny. Uh, I think he's sort of uh, sold out a little bit recently because all of his videos just so happen to be a little bit above the 10 minute mark and he's, um, he, his intro, man, his intro is getting a little bit too long. I love Internet Historian, even though he never uploads any videos. I've been watching a lot of Nintendo recently, who does a lot of weird, like, fact and trivia videos on Nintendo products. When I'm looking for video games, I like to go to Shammy, because Shammy does nice, long, meaty reviews of video games, and they're always pretty funny. Man, really, I could go on forever with YouTubers that I watch, because I just watch so, so many. Uh, my favorite YouTuber of all time, if that's what you were trying to ask, is Silent Rob, who, he's not for everybody, I'll do a video on him later, but, um... He's, he's really funny to me because he has this persona of being sort of like a hardened, tough gangster kind of guy who's also really passionate about video games. So there's a lot of cursing and swearing in his videos, and he makes jokes about, like, prostitutes and stuff, and it's actually really funny just because of, like, the, the persona is so over the top of, like, this internet tough guy kind of guy who's really, really hardcore about video games. It comes off as being really funny. His content lately has been kind of eh, mainly because he's moved on to live streaming since live streaming makes him a lot more money, but, you know, he's still really funny when he can be. So I think that's about it. If you have any questions, of course, leave them in the comment section below. This video should be up a little bit early today, so I might be able to get a second video done today, and that would be nice. I know this is a little bit disorganized. I did a lot less editing on this video than I normally do on my other videos, but hopefully you were able to get through it okay. If you're not a part of the Facebook or the Discord group yet, I highly recommend getting a part of either of them. They're both on my channel page now. They should be in the description below. Uh, check those out if you ever want to talk to me or if you maybe want to submit questions for the next Q&A I do. And I hope to see you guys later.